Good morning. Today's lecture is about uh, the interactions of the uh, radiation with the matters. In last lectures and the one before, we looked at uh, those particles that uh, were radiating and decaying. We looked at, we've seen the alpha, we've seen the beta and the gamma, and we've seen the differences between uh, those three types of particles. Today we will look at how those particles interact with the with the matters. We'll look here at uh, the tissue. So we have here the alpha and the beta particles. They are easily stopped by the tissue if they are generated from outside. Gamma rays, on the other hand, they do have a larger penetration into the, the tissue. As you can see here, they can penetrate all the way through the bones and the organs. So alpha and beta particles both are charged particles and while they are trying to penetrate into the tissue they tend to remove electrons and create uh, ionized tissues they leave some traces and trial they leave traces and trails of uh, charges they tend to transfer their kinetic energy into uh, charges by ionizing the tissue and this is basically where their energy get attenuated and they come to a stop Alpha and beta particles, when they are in the tissues, both of those particles, they are charged. While they are penetrating into the tissue, they tend to remove the electrons from the uh, atoms and molecules along their path. They tend to ionize the tissue. And while they are penetrating, their kinetic energy will be transferred to the tissue, leaving a trail of ionization over the relatively short distance they penetrate into the tissue. So at the end, they tend to slow down before they stop. So if we look at the uh, alpha and the beta here, we can see that the alpha goes into the tissue around 37 micrometer while beta at uh, two different energies they tend to penetrate between 290 micrometer up to 8 millimeter there is no significant concern due to the radiation of the alpha and beta if they're coming from external sources while gamma on the other hand those particles, they are not charged, they have no mass, and their interaction with the tissues is infrequent and random. So this phenomena basically is a random phenomena. They don't have a fixed range. They tend to penetrate, and their interaction with the tissues is based on the probability. So they average here, A distance of 33 millimeter up to 16.4 centimeter based on the, the energy of the source so they tend to as we've seen earlier penetrate into the tissues uh, way further than uh, alpha and beta that's why if I have an outside source and we want to design a treatment system in which you're trying to get ionizing radiation from a source that is outside the body to a tumor in the prostate, for example, 
which form of radiation would you use? Your, your source is outside and you're targeting this tumor, then definitely you will be taking the gamma rays because gamma rays, they tend to penetrate uh, for long range from outside, coming from outside. However, if you are designing a system that is launching the radiation from inside the body, attacking a tumor in the prostate, in this case, you need to have a more control. And since you are within the same medium and very close to the tumor, then you would need something that you can control and have relatively short penetration based on your location and this is why we're taking the beta particles the gamma ray interaction there are two important factor in defining the the depth of the penetration and the interaction number one is the energy that you that those gamma rays have and the material that those gamma rays are penetrating through. However, in all cases, the attenuation is happening exponentially, regardless of the energy and the material, but the decrease or the, the function depends on the amount of energy of those gamma rays that, you're, that they're coming from and the material that those gamma rays are penetrating through. If we look at uh, the energy, as you can see, the higher the energy, the longer the penetration before they start interacting. The lower the energy, the shorter the depth. So this would be the, the depth, attenuating exponential. If we're talking about the material, then the less density you have, the deeper the penetration would be so this is the the depth as you can see here the lead has way denser that's why the penetration before they stop is less than the concrete less than the air so the the depth the range for the gamma ray and the penetration of the of the material depends on the energy of those gamma rays and the material that those gamma rays are penetrating through. We define a coefficient that's called the attenuation coefficient. This attenuation coefficient is mu. This attenuation coefficient defines the number of gamma rays at a distance x in the medium. This number of coefficient depends on the energy of the gamma ray and also depends on the material. So for every material, every specific energy, there is a attenuation coefficient gamma. The unit for this attenuation coefficient is per unit length, either per meter or per centimeter. And the expression that defines the amount of gamma rays after penetrating an a depth of x as n x, where n naught is the the number of the gamma rays right at the at the surface, and then it decays. This number decays exponentially, as we can see, based on the depth and based on the attenuation coefficient. So we can define a parameter that. Uh, give me the typical uh, depth or penetration for the gamma ray that I am calling the mean free path. Since my attenuation coefficient has the information about uh, energy or as a function of the energy of this gamma rays and the function of the material itself, they, and I, can, I can make use of this uh, coefficient by introducing what's called the mean free path, which is the inverse of the attenuation coefficient, will give me the typical distance 
those gamma rays are going to penetrate before they interact. Now let's look at this example. In this example, we have the radioactive isotope CS-137 emits gamma rays that have an energy of 662 kilo electron volt. The attenuation coefficient for tissue at this energy, at this energy is 0 0.0905 per centimeter. A, what is the typical distance this isotope gamma ray will travel before interacting in tissue? B, determine the thickness of the tissue that results in half of the gamma rays getting through. We want to find what is the distance that at half of the gamma ray will make it through. This is what we call the half value layer, HVL, half value layer. So A, we need the distance. We know that the gamma here is 662 kilo electron volt. What else we know? We know mu is 0 0.0905 sun per centimeter. I need the mean free path that is 1 over mu. In this case, this mean free path equals to 11 centimeters. So this is the, the typical distance those gamma rays are going to penetrate before interacting with the tissue. B, we need n x equals to n naught. So this is the expression minus mu x. So I need to calculate the distance where half of my gamma ray are going to make it through. In this case, and this is what we call the half value layer. So I have HVL equals to half n naught, and this is my my nx. So here, if I substitute nx with half n naught, then I have half n naught equals to n naught e minus mu x, n naught is going to cancel. So I have take the natural logarithm for both sides. This is going to be minus mu x or x equals two divided by minus mu or x equals two minus Logarithm 2 over minus mu or x equals to point zero nine zero five, and then x equals to 7.66 centimeters. So this is the distance at where I have half of the gamma ray made it through. And then this is where for H V L. Of course at E gamma of six sixty two.
kilo electron volt. The next example is how much aluminum is required to reduce the number of the gamma ray of a 200 kilo electron volt. So we said that uh, the attenuation constant is a function of the, the energy of the gamma ray. So I cannot ignore the energy here. For that energy, I need to calculate the thickness of the aluminum that I can use to reduce the gamma ray to 10% of its incident value. The half value layer for the 200 kilo volt gamma rays is, in aluminum, is 2.14 centimeter. So here, in this case, we know that Nx equals to N naught V minus mu mu x. For 10%, then this is going to be N naught divided by 10 equals to N naught V minus mu x. I need x, so x here is the thickness of the aluminum that I need such that only 10% will make it after they penetrate into the aluminum. However, I don't know the mu and not gonna cancel. If I am to continue, then this one would be one over 10 equals to minus mu x. I need a mu. Where can I calculate mu? I can calculate the mu from the half value layer. So the half value layer here, 2.14 for half of the gamma. So here I know that half and naught, which is the half value layer equals to n naught e minus mu and x now is 2.14 centimeters. So my mu now will be per centimeter. N naught is going to cancel. Then I have natural logarithm of half equals to minus mu times 2.14 or mu equals to half over 2 14 then mu equals to 0.324 per centimeter. Take this mu, and substitute it here. Then you get x equals to 7.11 centimeters. 